Well, you can't spell rubble without ruble. Much like their space program, Russian assets are not headed for the moon. Now, More specifically, it looks like Russia is about to default on their global debts for the first time since the Russian Revolution. Now, This brings up a few questions, starting with the obvious. Why is Russia even trying to make payments to foreign investors right now? I mean, making regularly scheduled payments to America? Probably not at the top of their priority totem pole. Hey, know you're sanctioning our economy through the ground right now? Well, don't worry, our check's in the mail. Now, this conflict stems from a strange problem. Russia really, really, really needs foreign currency in their reserves. Now, they're more than happy to be making these payments in rubles, but investors abroad are saying, heck no, it's dollars or defaults. Take your pick. Now, at this point, most of you are probably noticing something a little strange in the meta text of this video. There seems to be something inherently better about dollars than their ruble counterparts. That difference in inherent value is at the core of understanding why exactly Russia is so insistent on making these regular payments to the very same people that are publicly arming the country that Putin is actively invading. Russia's ruble. Well, it's got one core problem to it. Nobody accepts it outside of Russia. Now, frustratingly enough for Putin, it's a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. I can't pay anyone with rubles, so I'm not going to accept payment in rubles. Now, with everyone outside of Russia coming to that exact same conclusion, rubles are pretty much worthless outside of Russia. Now, to go back to a metaphor I use a lot in these foreign currency episodes, it's easiest to picture Russia as a sort of Chuck E. Cheese. They're distributing all of these Chuck E. Cheese tokens that, well, they definitely hold value within the Chuck E. Cheese establishment. You can exchange that token for a game or one of those finger traps that break almost immediately the first time you use it. Of course, on the other hand, try to deposit a Chuck E. Cheese token in a bank and you're going to get laughed out of the establishment. You can try arguing with the banker, hey, if you go to one of the local Chuck E. Cheese establishments, you can exchange four of these for a dollar. They're just going to say, give me the dollar. Now, this all places Russia in a bit of a pickle because they're sitting on a bunch of Chuck E. Cheese tokens and looking to hold on to as many dollars as they can so they can keep importing things from outside of Russia. Now, being forced to pay down their debt in dollars is just another suck of foreign currency out of their foreign currency reserves. Now, this is particularly alarming for them right now because sanctions have immobilized about half of their $640 billion in foreign currency reserves, which is straining the country's ability to make bond payments in the currency that the debt was first issued in, dollars. So now we're sort of circling the truth of what's happening here and getting pretty close to the drain. Next question. Why would Russia be so intent on spending dollars to avoid defaulting on these debts? I mean, stick it to the capitalists and stop giving them your limited dollars. Well, let's go back to our locally owned Chuck E. Cheese one more time. You need dollars if you're going to be doing any sort of transactions with the outside world. How do you get those dollars? Well, first, you could sell things to other people. Want to play one of our games? Well, first you gotta give us your dollars and then we'll give you these coins and then you can play to your heart's descent. Russia's built up a huge reserve of foreign currency through this means because they've been selling Europe oil for decades. Europe, well they pay in euros. Now if you can't export things to people who pay in transactable currencies, you're gonna need to borrow money in dollars to buy things from abroad. Now it's this form of borrowing foreign currency that is alarming Russia right now. That might seem weird considering that with the sanctions currently in place, Russia can buy precisely nothing from the outside world. What are you guys so concerned about foreign money for? You can't spend it. Now the reason is, I'm not sure if any of my viewers have ever had bad credit, but try getting a loan at a reasonable rate any time in the future. Those credit scores, well, they stick with you, even if you're a country. 
If default should occur, it would raise Russia's costs of borrowing for years to come and effectively lock it out of international capital markets weighing on an economy that is already expected to contract sharply this year. Yeah, you start defaulting on your debt and, in the future, people stop lending you money. So now a picture is probably starting to emerge for most of you guys. You got a country that requires outside currencies to transact and conduct business and they have two methods of getting that outside currency, selling things to the world and loans. Start burning those financial bridges and you better hope buy local starts getting really popular in your country really quickly. Now there is just one final really interesting quirk that I have to address in all this. Usually when I cover these currency issues, the country in question is buying a lot more from the outside world than they're selling, meaning that they're spending their limited dollars outside and it's a drain on the whole system, a capital outflow. But in this case, Russia is consistently having capital inflows, meaning that year over year they're gaining more foreign currency than they're spending. This is 100% due to the fact that they're drowning in oil right now and they can export all of that to Europe. It also accounts for their unusually large foreign currency reserves that were all, unfortunately, recently frozen because they're being managed in the American banking system. So all this really gets to the core of the issue. Why would a country that makes more in foreign currency than it spends be so scared of losing these foreign currency lines of credit that they'd be willing to pay their dwindling foreign currency reserves to a country that, well, we'll just say our relationship status is, it's complicated right now. There are two main reasons. First, you gotta clear your mind of all of the currency stuff we've talked about for a sec. Just completely wipe the first 7 minutes of this episode from your mind. <laughs> this is, at the end of the day, loans we're talking about, also known as government debt. Russia, as a country, borrows a lot of money to pay for things. Wow, a country that spends more than it takes in tax revenue. What a novel concept. Now Russia has a bunch of domestic debt but they also need to occasionally dip into foreign markets to make up for some of that budget deficit. And this, well, this is the debt we're talking about. Start missing some of those dollar denominated payments and interest rates are going to go up on the international market. Second, they're also concerned that the default might enable creditors to seize Russian overseas assets as a form of repayment. Remember how America froze a bunch of Russia's foreign currency reserves that were being managed by our banks? Mentioned it a little earlier in the episode. Well, it would be totally illegal if we seized that frozen money for ourselves. It would really tarnish the reputation of our banking system with foreign investors. But if for whatever reason, the country whose money is frozen in our banking system were to stop paying their debts to our creditors, Time to start thawing out those funds and distribute those funds to our creditors. Now, something is telling me that, in the current political environment, Putin might not do too hot in American civil court. And now, for his part in this whole default debate, Putin is currently arguing to Moody's and the other credit rating agencies. Hey guys, I'm not defaulting on this debt because of financial irresponsibility. I'm just defaulting on this debt because, come on, Joe Biden froze the only money I have that you people will accept. What do you want? Trying to pay in rubles here. Don't make it like we're a bad debtor, our hands are tied. Now Russia can still make payments on Russian sovereign debt as long as it is not trying to use funds from Russian government accounts that are held in American financial institutions. Now unfortunately, Russia doesn't have a whole lot of greenbacks sitting in their vaults. So that's exactly how Russia's pending default is shaping up right now. They've missed a payment and they have until May 3rd's grace period, 30 days, to make it up. After that, well they have officially defaulted. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. 
Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put on my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to like and subscribe, and give me that thumbs up, and lastly, as always, thank you for watching.